Assalamu alaikum. Thought I'd give it one more try at a live video. Uh, I don't know if any of you are even awake at this point. Uh, yeah. So I'm back on tour tomorrow. Um, just thought I might as well have a chat tonight before I go to sleep with a couple of you. Because people are still asking me questions and that. But yeah, bro, watching that program again, just, you know, really irritated me. Like, proper, proper irritated me, man. The amount of ignorance I had to put up on that show is astounding. Like, honestly, wallahi, my intentions of going that show were genuine. I just wanted to speak, you know, and get my op opinion across. An opinion that, you know, might not necessarily be shown often on media. But a lot of those people just wanted to promote themselves, you know? Like, how can you be on a show about Islam and you don't like it when people talk about Islam? Um, the fight wasn't over onions, you know? Like I said, over the period of five days, I was getting, I was dealing with very, very racist views from the housemates. Like, that guy that you saw crying after I confronted him is the same person that was saying that Africans should be happy about slavery because Asians built trains in Africa you know so it wasn't over onions and then on top of that isn't it funny how it's me that was aggressive even though I never raised my voice like I never shouted he walked up towards me you know he walked towards me aggressively yet somehow I'm the aggressive one okay you know, um, that's why, you know, it was just, it was a bit weird. And then, you know, you've got white people and Asians. Um, not all of you are bad, I know. But you've got these people on flipping Facebook talking about how I'm aggressive. Now, I want to Google the definition of aggressive because maybe I just don't understand English. I mean, I'm private school educated, but maybe I don't understand it. So let, let's let's Google aggression, shall we? Because from what I understand, I didn't raise my voice. Alhamdulillah, barakallahu feek. You know, feelings of anger, antipathy resulting in hostile, violent behavior and readiness to attack or confront. Did I attack anybody? Did you see me attack anybody on the show? No, but I get called aggressive. You know, even as we are now on this page that I'm talking to you guys through, I've received a whole bag of um, abuse on here from people who are so brave that they uh, choose to <laughs> they're so brave that they um, come on Facebook and say things anyway I'm not advising you to confront me to my face because um, what I can say is that uh, if you meet me on the street and say these things to me I'm not on camera so yeah so um, well yeah these these people man they were crazy Honestly, like, it, it was insane. They, they, they had no um, interest whatsoever. Yeah, I know. Mara, yeah, I was hilarious. You when he ran into, like... What did I say about his mom, Tahira? I said his mom didn't teach him any better. That's something we say all the time. Evidently, I didn't insult his mom. He insulted his own mom from his behavior. Because if, if I was on TV carrying on the way some of these people were carrying on, my mom would be angry because she'd be like, boy, you know I taught you better. So, you know, was he right to, to tell, was he right to say the racist things, huh, Tahira? Was he right to say that we should be happy that we were enslaved? You're asking me if he was right to talk about his mom. Okay, well, was he right to talk about my, my ancestors being enslaved and saying that we should be happy about it? Exactly. The stupid boy. So... You know, um, I'm not gonna lie. The scene of him crying was actually quite funny. Like, you think that he, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yes, Shagufta, you would be an extremist to the people on the house. And you know, everybody on the um, everybody in the house, it was calculated. What they'll do is they try and um, say things to you. They'll try and do things to you, and then when you don't have it, they'll start saying that, oh, 
you're a bully or you're aggressive. It's no different from being a black person working in an office full of white people. As soon as you react to bullshit, sorry for swearing, my wife hates it when I swear. But yeah, as soon as you react to people's nonsense, you're the one. Oh yeah, you're you're a racist, you're this, you're that. Wow, Naim Raza knows that guy. The thing is that the producers edit it, but you know, the only way that the show gets passed is if the BBC itself likes the show. So no matter what the producers like, there still has to be a re-edit. So shout out to uh, Mobin, Mobin Azhar, who is uh, one of the main producers of the show. You know, he tried his best to make it fair. Um, but obviously, you know, with some things, the... Producers' hands are tied. You know, so. Yeah, and I just want to say a big barakallahu fiqh to all you guys, barakallahu fiqh, you know, for all the. Uh, all the positive messages I'm being getting from you. But yeah, I want you guys to understand that it wasn't just uh, onions or whatever that was <laughs> causing. That was causing uh, the beef that you saw. Um, it was. It was more than that. It, it was actually down to uh, people saying some very bigoted and prejudiced things, and it was every day over five days, like the scene, the part where. Um... <laughs> yeah, that was funny, but you see the part where um, she was like, "Oh, you're always talking about heaven and hell." I never spoke about heaven and hell. That was Abdul Haq. So Naila actually confused me with another housemate. Can you imagine that? She was actually confusing me with um, another housemate. You know, because obviously all Kali look the same in it. All Kalas look the same to her, so... Yeah, me and Abdul Haq look nothing alike, but somehow, somehow, some way, she still found a way to talk to me about something Abdul Haq did. So, yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, it's it's frustrating because, you know, these, these Muslims who don't pray and don't fast and don't practice the religion always like to carry on like, um, you know, they are the moderates. And everyone else who practices the religion, everyone else who wants to play Salah, who wants to do all these things, they, they, they make us out like we're the extremists. That's the reason. Honestly, I didn't want to do the show at first. My initial intention, I, I, I didn't want to do the show because I thought, you know, it's the I don't trust the BBC. It was only a uh, sheikh, an imam that I know and trust from Cambridge, who contacted me and said he knew one of the producers, uh, Mobin, and so on, and convinced me that I should do the show. Uh, and I just thought, you know what, because I never really, uh, I never really like what I see on TV as far as how Muslims are, cons are you know, represented. I thought it's my, op it's my opportunity, it's my duty to go on and try my best. Instead of criticizing other people, you know, because Allah, Allah opens doors for people to do things. And Alhamdulillah, based on the response, I think for the most part, most of you are happy with what I did. I know some of you are not happy, but hey, you can't please everybody. Flipping hell, 756 tw Twitter notifications. <sighs> but, you know. And of course, somebody is saying that... Uh, Somebody, people are saying how I picked on the guy simply because he's gay. Mate, I went to drama school. I have, <laughs> you know, I'm the least, I mean, I think, it, I believe homosexuality to be haram, but I'm the least homophobic person you'll ever meet. It's pretty much the only straight guy at my year in uni. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was unfortunate. It was unfortunate. And then, um, on the show, obviously, I had to talk about anti-blackness because anti-blackness is a problem that we have in the Ummah. And I think these, these, um, this problem 
actually makes things worse for Asians because not all Asians are racist. We are we are aware of this, but because the loudest ones tend to be, or not, a lot of the loudest ones are quite ignorant, it makes people who don't know any better think that all Asians are this way, you know? Drinking pineapple juice because I've got the flu, and um, I don't know if you guys know this, but pineapple juice is much better for coughs than cough syrup. So yeah. Oh, by the way, sorry, I understand some of you got to see... Uh, my butt crack. Um, <laughs> hope it was as good for you as it was for me. But yeah, so it's important. Now, those of you on here who are watching this that are white or Asian, I want you to understand that when we talk about white privilege or racism within Asian culture, we're not trained trying to say that you're all bad. We're not trying to make you feel bad. But here's the thing. Not every Asian in the house was racist, right? But when the other ones were being idiots, the rest just stood and kept quiet. And that's a problem. Whatever, Akila, you loved it. You loved it. Yeah? Stop, stop acting like you didn't. Um, <laughs> you, you got mooned, didn't it? Chandrat. <laughs> but yeah, what we have to understand as Muslims is just the same thing as a man. Whenever I see something sexist happening, I have to challenge my privilege as a man, as a heterosexual man. I have to challenge my privilege and call out sexism whenever I see it. Even though it's something that I don't experience and it's something that I will never fully understand. It is my responsibility as a man, whenever I see sexism, to call it out. So it's the same thing when it comes to shit, you know, things, things like racism. If you're Asian and you've got a relative that calls black people banda and all these kind of things. It's your responsibility to educate your family. Don't say, oh, they're the older generation because Jahannam does not respect old or young. Only babies are spared from Jahannam. Babies do not get punished for their crimes. Children do not get punished because they don't know right from wrong. But aunties, uncles, adults, doesn't matter what generation they're from. From they are able to know right from wrong they are held accountable and racism is a huge sin so you need to call it out wherever you see it i'm afraid if you don't call out racism in your families whenever you see it then you're no better than the non-muslims that don't call out uh that don't call out islamophobia i wouldn't say me and abdul haq are friends but we talk a little bit you know um, he's, he's, he was an alright guy it's just I didn't agree with a lot of his views and the thing is the program didn't show it but him and I sat down and spoke a lot like you guys saw how um, I challenged him on his statements about um, Shias you know I'm a Sunni myself I'm from Nigeria um, so you know I, I've got family friends who are followers of Sheikh Zakzaki I've got a lot of Shia friends I'm a Maliki so when I first came to this country, I prayed with my hands by my side. People thought I was a Shia. So, you know, I don't pray that way anymore. But I, have, I don't have a problem with people who do. And, you know, while I do disagree with the law statements that come from some Shias, you know, you can't call them all Kufar. Yeah, some Shias are. Some Sunnis are Kufar. You know, it, some Sunnis, not all Sunnis are upon the Sunnah. You know, and the Shias have a lot of good points, actually, in things that they say. Shias have a lot of really strong points when it comes to talking about Ahlul Bayt, and that's something for another day, but, you know, we just don't agree with the Shia who insult Aisha, radiallahu anha, you know. But other than that, you know, you can't say, oh, Shia is a kufar. You can't say that. I mean, Abdul the thing is, now the issues with, the issues with, like, um, uh, someone like Abdul Haq is that Muslims are quick to make non-Muslims take shahada. It's like you're keeping score. But once these people take shahada, we don't do anything to make sure that their aqidah is correct. How many reverts have you invited to your house? How many converted Muslims have you invited to your house for dinner, for Eid? You know? So if, if we're not, you know, and I, I'm a born Muslim, so I'm saying this myself. If we're not, if we're not um, trying, if we're not engaging these new Muslims and making sure they're okay, 
then the angentiaries of this world are going to be waiting for them to mislead them because a lot of these boys have pain in their heart. You know, you look at Muhajirun and, uh, you know, a lot of these guys have pain in their heart. That's how, even the EDL, a lot of these guys have pain in their heart and then somebody comes and misguides them. So that's why I made a point of whenever Abdul Haq spoke, I wasn't sucking up to him. We weren't hugging and kissing each other like the way Bara was with that EDL guy. But I made sure I sat down and I spoke to him and I said, mate, you're wrong because the sunnah says this, this hadith says that, this ayat says that. Whereas the rest of the house were just shouting at the guy and being abusive. <sighs> you know, they were just being abusive. And that, that alone is not the way to deal. You have to challenge people intellectually. You don't have to hug and kiss people to challenge them intellectually. right? And then you look at my confrontations with Sabah and so on. I, people are calling me a bully because oh, you know, I just sat down. All I did was sit down. Because like when we were in the house, we discussed... We discussed, um, you know, terrorism and whatnot. And I said that whenever white people um, commit a crime, they're not noted as terrorists. They're not seen as terrorists. And, uh, you know, they're called... And she said, oh, stop bringing race into it. And it was about four or five times, but it was only ever put captured on camera once. And she said all these things about the abaya and the hijab and how Muslims need to, you know, Muslims need to blend in with English culture. Look at me, man. Look at, look at my skin. How am I going to blend in? If I, if I just went to the middle of some little cul-de-sac in Stoke, some cul how would I blend in? You know, you can't just tell people to blend in. How? You know, how are, little, how are South Asian girls supposed to blend in? They look different. You're identifiable as a Muslim. So, you know, to tell people that they should just blend in is ignorant. And it's only, that's the sort of thing, only a white person can say something like that. Because, you, you know, same thing with Barah when he was talking. And he actually retracted his, what he said about Muslims not blending in. But, um, you know, it's a thing where Barah... You know, he's blonde, he's got blue eyes. I thought he was German when I first met him. I thought he was German, wallah. You know, so someone like Barat might not really understand the racism that the EDL and those lot push. Because he wouldn't be a prime target straight away. Not like the way I would. Well, I wouldn't because I'm a 300 pound man. But you see what I'm saying. Um, so when I was t talking to Sabah, I was just trying to put across to her that as a man, I don't tell women when and when not to talk about sexism. As a white woman, you have no right to tell black and brown people not to talk about race, you know? And uh, you guys know I'm not a hypocrite. Some of you have been following me now for years. MashaAllah, I love you guys. You see that, you know, uh, I, I try my best. I try my best to, you know, talk about even the injustices against women as a man. So it's not even a thing where I don't acknowledge my own privilege. But the moment I say something, is oh, you're a man, so you're being dominant. What what do they even mean by dominant? I'm a I'm a confident I'm a I'm a confident, strong, articulate black man. When I speak, I speak with confidence. You can't make me out to be a bad person because when I talk, you say I'm dominant. No, that's not dominance you're hearing. That's excellence. You're not just I'm not being a bully. I'm not forcing my views on anybody. It's just that when I speak, I only speak when I know something. You see there many times in the show where people were talking and I kept quiet. But when it was something I was passionate about, I spoke and I stood up. Because we're on TV, now is your chance to get your view across. Why should I keep quiet? There's, you know, we're in a house where only a handful of people had ever read the Quran. And they were talking about Islam. Of course I'm not going to sit down and listen to them talk nonsense. Like when I was talking to that guy about heaven or hell, Farhan wasn't even part of the discussion. And he just decides to, you know, he just decides to come in. And then I asked him, have you ever read the Quran? And he said, no. Then why are you commenting on it? You, you know, why are you talking about it? You know, it's, it's ridiculous, guys. It really is. And, and it's really easy to paint me as homophobic. You guys, little do you guys know, I've got gay friend followers and that on this, you know, social media right now. And I know they're gay, but I don't pick on them because they're gay. People are on Twitter now saying, oh, were you picking on Farhan because he was gay? Like, come on, man. I'm not homophobic. Homophobia is gay. <laughs>
So, yeah, man. Anyway, you guys, I want to talk to you. You know, what's happening right now in Aleppo is it, it's sad. And um, we have to do whatever we can um, to help. So, you know, like I said, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whenever you see something that you do not like and you feel is wrong, then you need to speak about it. Well, first you change with your hands. Then you speak about it if you can't change with your hands. And if you can't speak about it, then hold anger in your heart. So, me going on this TV show was me doing something I could, you know. And um, right now I'm on tour, um, you know, I've got a whole bunch of dates. Uh, I can post the link and uh, <clears throat> I'm, uh, we, we're, we're raising funds for Syria and uh, Palestine, you know. And, uh, you know, what, what's happening there is like, it's, it's horrific, it's really messed up. And um, so, with Human Appeal, so far we've raised a couple hundred thousand pounds over the last eight days. Um, and that money is going to Syria. That money is also going to Palestine. So, even if you don't come to watch the show, I, I implore you, please, you know, get some tickets. Um, if you're interested, uh, I'm going to post a link right now on both my fan page. Oh, hi, Maryam. How you doing? You all right? Yeah, sorry you couldn't watch the show. And yeah, homophobia is gay, and so are you. <laughs> well, um, you know, yeah. So we're raising money for Syria, and um, Palestine, Palestine. And um, you know, it would be great if you guys could come, uh, because we do meet and greet after the show. There's quite a few of you I've not met in person yet, and I would love to. You know, we could sit down, we can talk. Uh, you know, anybody who ha who knows me will tell you. Um, <laughs> All right, then, Wash well, Gufta, make sure you um, introduce yourself to me after the show. Sorry, I hope that doesn't sound weird, but yeah, like, you know, I'm an approachable guy in real life. So, you know, if anybody wants to talk, you know, just, you know what I mean, after the show, I'm, I'm going to be there. We can have a little chat and that. But, you know, please, if you can, donate. You know, even if you can't come to the show, just buy a ticket. At least that money will go towards charity. And if you can come and donate, even better. You know, because it's, it's, it's important. Um, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved charity. So, Alhamdulillah. Um, and I hope you guys also continue to support CAGE. Because remember that a lot of people have to understand that um, the problems Muslims face um, in, in, in the world, not just in um, Syria, but also, you know, in the UK, it's not just charitable problems. It's legal problems as well. You know, like with Prevent and Schedule 7, there's a whole bunch of laws here that mean that Muslims have less rights uh, than others. Like, you know, if you don't come, I'll kill you. Oh, but wait, they're going to say that I threatened someone now. If you don't come, I'll, I'll send you that video of me wrestling on the TV show. <laughs> I know you like it. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm putting the link now in the comment section of this video, I think. And, um, yeah. yeah, I'm just going to put it in the comment section. But, yeah, people, you know, we need to do whatever we can to raise money for charity and whatnot. Um, obviously, anybody interested in charity, there's a number of ways that, thanks Yasin, there's a number of ways that, you know, you can help with different, I, I myself try to busy myself with as much charity as I can. So currently I run one called pathways.org, well, pathways, and, um, yeah, be in Pakistan, yeah, wherever, Akila. So, um, currently, thanks Shreb. So currently we, we, we've got a project called um, Pathways and what we do is we provide supported housing to vulnerable homeless people, not just men, but men and women. Now, originally when we did the program it was men, we've expanded. Um, I currently look after about 25 formerly homeless vulnerable people. Um, so when I'm not doing stand-up comedy, I'm a mentor um, to these people where I'm helping them, we, we provide shelter and support. So I've, I've, by next year, I think seven of my clients are going to be going 
from street homeless to employed in their own properties uh, through the support that we've given them by Allah's grace. And, um, you know, any support, show Akira, you know, you're always welcome. Any support anyone wants to give is great, you know. So that was touched on a bit in the program. The Daily Mail have found a way to still make me out to be bad, saying that I only fed men. You know, you can't you can't please anybody, that's all I'm saying. So, you know, there's that. And yeah, man, right now on my Twitter, the amount of abuse that I've received so far is actually quite epic. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, man, I'm just going to go into the inbox now. You know, I've got quite a few messages. Oh, alhamdulillah, so far it's actually quite pleasant. I'm surprised. So, <laughs> still crying over it. Yeah, let me just send this guy a kiss. So yeah, you know, I don't, you know, this is a big problem we have now. Yeah, the bully thing, it? it's so easy. I don't know what it is. It's so easy for people to make out, um, make out a black man to be a bully. And it's such a cop out, you know. So it's like a guy walked up on me, hyping and shouting after taking my things. Yet somehow I'm the bully. SubhanAllah, well, I believe da'wah takes many different forms, Brother Fias. You know, sometimes you have to gauge people based on where they are. Now, Abdul Haq wanted to give da'wah in the house. But the thing is, the people in that house are not ready to even... They don't know the difference between Quran and Hadith. They don't know what these things are. So when you start quoting scriptures to people like that, you might not reach them. The best form of da'wah for me is always through your actions. And then when somebody asks you why you've done the good thing that you've done, say, I did it because I'm a Muslim. To me, I found that more effective. And they want to say, oh, really? What does your religion teach that? Then you hit them with the hadith. Then you hit them with, you know, the ayat. I mean, obviously, the Quran is the, the most uh, is God's literal word. But remember that even the people who were alive during the time the Quran was being revealed, received the Quran bit by bit and they received the revelation as they were getting ready for it. Remember that the, the laws and the rules of Islam, they came slowly to the people because they were not ready for everything all at once. Yet these were the people who were witnessing the miracles of Islam. You know, they were witnessing the miracles of Islam um, you know, in front of them. So, you know, even with all the wonders that they were witnessing, you know, that lady wouldn't allow me to speak. Well, uh, it's it's a thing. Well, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he dealt with Abu Jahl. He dealt with, you know, people far more ignorant than the people I was dealing with, I guess. And, um, Actually, um, Human Appeal have now started raising funds for Gambia and Senegal. And in fact, they, I'm in negotiation with one of the guys in Human Appeal. Um, and we might be starting a project. Remember the masjid that I've got, that my family runs in Nigeria? I'm trying to discuss with the guy. Maybe, inshallah, they can provide some support for that masjid. Um, but Human Appeal actually does do some stuff in Africa and I'm in talks with them. I might even go and do some volunteering out in Senegal because you know how much I love the Senegalese. But yeah, guys. Um, exactly, Raza. No matter what I did, no matter what I said, you know. No matter what I did or what I said, people would always make me out to be a racist. And, um, yeah, um, 
I think there's a sister on my page that might be able to put a link, but it's a 100% donation policy on some of the donations. Now, where, what page am I on? Sorry, <coughs> I'm looking at three different pages at the same time. But yeah, please, guys, man, you need to, let's try and be more proactive. The biggest problem that we have as well as Muslims is that we're reactive, not proactive. So we don't do, we wait for people to do and then we react. Yes, Umar, and that is why I'm in negotiation with them to do something. Remember that as well, there's logistics. Most Nigerians here in England come from the south. Um, I'm from northern Nigeria. I'm a proud uh, northern Nigerian. And, um, you know, I, I can count how many other people I've met in this country from the north. So I guess even establishing links with the north has been difficult. But, um, inshallah, we're going to do something about it. They have links in Gambia because there are loads of Gambians here, more so than northern Nigerians. So, inshallah, you know, you're, you're preaching to the converted, brother. I, I agree with you. We need more stuff in Africa. But I've taken a stance that instead of being aggressive with them, I'm just going to talk to them and see, you know, see what we can do. You know what I mean? Um, any questions? Anything else I haven't discussed? Anything we can talk about? Mm -hmm. Also, it, it's important as well. You know, a lot of people are coming out now saying, yeah, black people are racist too. <sighs> yeah, there's a difference between structural racism and an individual being prejudiced towards you, you know? So some cultures have that problem. <laughs> What's the purpose of life? Do you think I am Khalid Yassin? Well, I'll tell you this. For me, the purpose of life for me, number one is to serve God. So for me, it's God family community i exist to serve these three things and also collect air force ones i have a lot of air force ones it's difficult because i wear size 12 but i have a lot of air force ones but yeah you know in, in life the most important things should be serving god serving your family and serving your community and you know if you do those three things no matter what anyone says to you you know alhamdulillah like i, I like to say alhamdulillah now because Allah protected me. Allah protected me from shame and disgrace. You know, alhamdulillah, um, you will never see me, um, you will never see me wrapped up in any scandal or anything, no matter what these people try to do. Yeah, um, I'm kind of in touch with Abdul Haq, like we spoke on Instagram not long before the show came on. Um, you know, it's, it's like, we're not friends, like I wouldn't say we're, pals or anything but he's actually a cool guy when he's not um when we're not talking about the even when he talks about dean like the thing is you know he has some good views as well as some very 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 dodgy ones so he has some good views on things like politics and whatnot because we had a lot of debates on the show with producers and whatnot and with the non-muslim house that came to the house but um they didn't make it into the, the program because it's 10 days 10 days is very difficult to fit into you know two episodes but we, we we talked about like you know they asked also you know asking us questions about sharia and we defended sharia to the point where the people we were talking to actually agreed with us that actually sharia might be um a very feasible form of government if done properly because when people talk about sharia it's always important to ask them which sharia they're talking about because you know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's sharia, is that necessarily the kind of sharia you're seeing in Nigeria or Saudi or wherever? It's not. So just because people are showing you an imperfect example of something doesn't mean that that thing they're showing you is imperfect. Because if these people want to act like sharia is imperfect uh, because um, people are doing bad things in the name of sharia or they want to say sharia is imperfect because accidents happen in muslim countries then let's talk about democracy let's talk about um let's talk about 
It's secular law, in, like in America, where black people are being killed like dogs and chickens on the street. So does that represent the form of law that they have in that government? More black people have been killed in the last five, five or six years than were ever lynched during Jim Crow laws. So what does that say about the law system they have there and the police officers get away with it? You know? <laughs> black people. Black people, if we were racist, think about how many black... Someone's asking, like, a lot of people say black people are racist. The people that say black people are racist tend to be racist themselves. If black people were racist, Eminem would not be a platinum award-winning rapper. You can't name one black person doing Bollywood or Bangra music. Why? Because Asians would not accept such a person. That you, you, you can't name... Look, you've got Asians in Africa telling you that they're Kenyan. But... Even the indigenous black people in Pakistan are still not given the same recognition as regular Pakistanis. And if black people were racist, then Asians wouldn't be running to Africa during the Raj. Because remember, there's two waves of Asians or Indians in Africa. There was the people who went to Africa, uh, you know, with the white people to, when they were colonizing Africa. Because obviously this South Indian, the Indian subcontinent actually got, the Indian subcontinent actually got colonized first. So they were still colonizing Africans and Asians came over, which is why they got higher um, positions in uh, apartheid, right? However, however, um, shit, I almost lost my train of thought there. <laughs> what was I even saying? Yeah, they, they can still call themselves, yeah, the Shidin in Karachi and whatnot are not treated nicely by um, their Asian counterparts. Every year we, we have black students being killed in India in their tents, right? But look at the way Indians and whatnot are treated in Africa. You guys, you know, um, Indians can come to Africa and tell you that they are African. And nobody denies this. So, should go to sleep. <sighs> to be honest, I'm going to be sleeping on the tour bus because we've, we are, we're back on tour from tomorrow. And uh, I don't even know what's going to happen. When I step on stage, I don't know how people are going to receive me now after all of this, you know, wedding spirit. Where the hell is that? Where the hell is Wensbury? Like, we're going to all these next ends, bruv. The hell is... So we're in Wensbury, Coventry, Stoke. We're in Leicester on the 17th. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, we're in Coventry, Stoke, Leicester, Peterborough. We're in some interesting places. It's just two episodes, man. Yeah, Wensbury, man. That sounds like one of them strange places there where everybody, everybody is named Agnes and flipping, you know. Do they even have electricity there? I don't know. But yeah, this is going to be the first time I've performed since I was on TV. Oh, it's near Birmingham. Near Dudley. Flipping out. <laughs> Kwam Rune. That's a really cool name, man. That's a proper cool... You, you a guy or a girl? What kind of name is Kwam Rune, bruv? That's some heavy... That's a heavy name, bruv. You sound like a... Flipping five percenter, yo man, you know what I'm saying? My name's Kwam Rune, you know what I'm saying? About to drop some supreme mathematics on your ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's also Chav Central. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I love me Chavs, I do. Oh God, <laughs> I don't know why these charities pick these random places, man. But Wensbury, Flipping Tuesday. <laughs> Cameroon. It sounds like you're named after Cameroon, the country. <laughs> hey, don't get angry. Yeah? Don't get angry. Sorry. No, it's a it's a proper it's a proper it's a proper cool name, man. It's a cool name. I'm looking for more names because you know, I like names that aren't common. You know, like I used to always be happy about my name Nabil until I met Pakistanis. Because in Nigeria, nobody's named Nabil. But here in England, every Pakistani I know has a cousin named Pakistani. 
pissed. So yeah, um, we we're back on tour tomorrow, and you know it's it's um, no, I didn't cook pounded yam for the house. I cooked um, I just boiled yam, regular yam, and I did like a Nigerian omelet. So Cameroon, or Cameroon, or Cameroon, or Cameroon. Um, sorry, I'm sure when you speak, speak, see me in person and tell me your name, I'll be able to say it. Are you coming to one of the shows? You guys should come to the shows, man. Anyway, how come everybody is awake, man? Like, I swear this is like a weekday. I'm a comedian, so the week means nothing to me. But how come you guys are... How come you guys are still awake, man? I swear you guys have work tomorrow morning. Yeah, they want to change in the dead ends. I hear you, Dom. Have you been anyway, Variety D? Man, like Variety D. <sighs> man. Um. So, yeah. This show, I'm just glad Allah protected me. Los Angeles, look at you. Oh, I'm really disappointed, Cameroon. Really disappointed. You know, I thought we bonded, you know, in that we both have unusual names. Well, your name is quite weird. You sound like the name of like a distant planet or something. I am Cameroon. From the Delta Quadrant. But yeah. It's nuts, man. It's 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 nuts. But I, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to all, like, you know, I don't like calling you guys fans because I don't believe in that. I'm not anybody to have fans. I'm nothing but all you guys that's, a, you know. Yeah, well, no. Apparently, he didn't wear mascara. Apparently, he has... Glaucoma, which <laughs> it's not funny, but it is, you know, like, can you imagine? He, he was smiling in my face the whole time, yeah? And then when I went out of the room, because I had, fuck off, you're just burly, innit? You're burly. <laughs> then when he saw me the next day, he was smiling and kissing my ass. And on top of that, after all of that, those bastards all ate the food I cooked. One of them even took my grape juice, bruv. I had Welch's grape. Yeah, that's the that Hardest, most bad boyest grape juice out there, baby, baby. Yeah, Biggie talked about it. It's the only f non-alcoholic beverage to be talked about in a classic hip hop track. And these bastards took my juice. You like they're lucky I didn't go back and kick off. You know. So makeup, nah, fam. Well, the guy follows me on Twitter still, and I've been rinsing him, so obviously he's seen it. Um, but yeah, I think, you know what? When Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you, you know, the plans don't... Which good swearing? I ain't sworn. Whatever, Shagufta. Where are you from, Shagufta? Bradford? That's a very Bradford name. But yeah. Yeah. These people, man. Twitter is full of idiots as well. I've got this one crazy woman talking to me about how, yeah. That I was testing the grounds. Why was I so aggressive? Me and my own, yeah. Somebody took from me. Somebody took something from me. I can't even ask him now. <sniffs> yeah, so even me, I never heard of Wensbury. Wensbury, Tewsbury, and Thursbury. <laughs> Apparently, the... um. You're from from London and Birmingham, and your name is Shagufta. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, I just assumed. Yes, Zoheb. What's going on, man? Yeah. 
You need to buy a ticket, rude boy. I wanna, I wanna see you in person, man. This, this tour thing is gonna be huge. Wensbury is. F <laughs> How could a place be famous for IKEA, blood? <laughs> of all the things for a place to be famous for, IKEA. Oh, how nice. I just got a message of solidarity from uh, Ali Official. I guess that makes me official now, innit? <sighs> They'll make another program about Muslim. In fact, I've already been... Um, I've already been contacted for another program about Muslims. And I know two of the people, well, one of the other people that's been contacted about it as well. And he happened. Ah, oh, Khartoum, that is such a pretty name. Um, one of my family friends, um, my sister's, one of my sister's best friends, who her name was Khartoumi. I... Yeah, I almost named my daughter Khartoum. That is such an awesome name. But in the end, I gave her a different name. But, um, yeah, Brother Abdul Haq, you know what? It is from the Sunnah to lower your gaze and stuff. You have to understand, women, that as men, you know, it, it, some guys just can't cope being around women. And I know that sounds sexist or whatever, but for real, it's some guys out here that as soon as they see a woman, they start thinking thoughts. And because of that, you know, Islam is such a wise religion that to avoid these things, um you know you look you lower your gaze you lower your gaze because it, it it protects you from fitna you know so that that's what it is it's not really we should try and be careful of calling people extreme if they're following um the deen because really and truly we should lower our gaze when we're speaking to the opposite sex you know um, some brothers have a problem with lust and things like that. You find a lot of brothers, you know, end up, you know, let me not be too graphic, but some brothers struggle with interaction with the opposite sex. So the, the best way for them is to lower their gaze. Um, we pray Allah strengthens their resolve. You know, it's hard out here, especially, you know, even being married, it can still be different. And yeah, some asshole on Twitter is trying to be funny. Um, yeah, Abdul Haq got bullied. Yeah, he did. And I was the only one sticking up for him. Then gradually, Bara started sticking up for him as well. And then the whole house got divided. And it was basically me, Bara, Humaira. And believe it or not, Marin was actually closer at one point to us, the so called uh, Orthodox. Uh, fundamentalist in the house than she was the liberal people but she let me down in the end because when that thing kicked off um she stayed quiet she stood on one side <laughs> yeah you know so but i guess some people aren't designed for confrontation in it yeah you have to think about it because of the hack you know ask yourself what makes somebody um leave their whole you know i have a lot of respect for reverts you know because Think about you as a Muslim becoming a Christian, how hard that would be. That's what these guys went through. Losing family, losing their old lifestyle. You know, Abdul Haq used to, you know, could have been a, a very successful boxer. Well, he left that behind because of his love for the deen. Mm, that, that requires some respect. I don't like all the stuff that he says, though. <laughs> submarine I'll... yeah sorry my uh, connection in my hotel is quite weak but yeah yeah you're right about um, Marine she's actually very um, she's actually a very nice sister mashallah and you know while I was there you know she, she sat with us she read Quran with us and all of that so you know um, the worst person in the house I think would have been Naila and then Sabah, um, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Marine's actually, um, what I like about Marine is that, 
what I like about Marine is that, um, you know, even though she doesn't look it, she actually loved Islam and so on. Someone's still asking me about the onion. Fam, I answered. Hey, look at that. Look at those waves, man. What was Lil Wayne talking about? Tougher than Nigerian hair. Uh, hi, Imran. I'm glad that you're Muslim and you go to the gym. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't even want to comment on Sabah, man. Like, why she became Muslim. But she still had a lot of very, very backwards views. You know, I mean, she grew up in India when India was still under the control of England as a colony. Yeah, Marin did see. I mean, you know, when you're around somebody every day, eventually you have to see some good in them. And also you have to see some bad. So it was only natural that uh, people would see good in Abdul Haq, you know. So, yeah, I'm not going to cuss the producers of this show. Because at the end of the day, they gave me a platform, right? So even though they edited the program a certain kind of way, it's just part of the game. This is part of your data. <laughs> Uh, Joanna, you're funny. <laughs> I wish, actually, there was a really nice masjid. Um, there was a really nice masjid in um, near you. So, yeah, um, how much you get paid for doing that program? <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, anyway, um, I'm not completely against the people who put me on the program or the producers. Um, they selected me. I think they'd seen a bunch of my videos and they wanted somebody that was politically aware and racially awake, uh, conscious. So I was handpicked. Um, and they all went looking for different types of Muslims. But I think the caveat was it had to be Muslims that they themselves knew people that were similar to. So, you know, I don't know how many Muslims you guys know like me, but that's another discussion altogether. Um, but yeah, they look, they handpicked all of us. Um, I think generally we were all people. Yeah, this is weird, man. Different parts of my hotel room have more um, thingy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That EDL thing was cringeworthy, bro. I mean, cartoon, it was really, really cringeworthy. Like. But in the end, like, if, if you contact Barah now, he actually has changed his views. So, alhamdulillah, he was influenced uh, by our little, you know, because we did educate him about the EDL later. Well, yeah, it looks like in the end, despite the negative uh, effects of some of the editing, um, I came out okay. This is so weird, what I have to do just to be able to do this live broadcast. Um, but yeah. <sighs> yeah, I'm mean, still trying to be funny with his jokes about the onion. Yeah, dude, you know, um, don't take my onions, especially if you're a racist asshole that thinks my people deserve to be enslaved. <sighs> you know. But yeah, um, overall, I hope everyone's happy. Um, if there's any questions left, uh, you know, let me know. I'll probably answer them tomorrow. I need to sleep. Eh, I'm sorry you think the program was a waste. Um, I don't. I think it was annoying at, at times, but I think that, you know, at least from my contribution, that there was some good. Um, but yeah, you live and you learn. So, 
I'm gonna go to sleep because I've got a show tomorrow in Wensbury, wherever the hell that is. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So please, guys.